people using his name to make money from foreign governments, kind of like his son did. So the swamp, who was so irritated, so pissed off, so angry that they were excommunicated from the White House in D.C. over the past four years, they're going to be coming back with a vengeance. When they see puppet Joe Biden in the White House, they're going to know that it is time for them to get all the kickbacks. It is going to be time for them to make the money again. It's going to be time for them to be doing all the sweetheart deals that they weren't able to do when, when Donald Trump was president. And that should be scary. That should be deeply terrifying to anybody that's in America. Just take a look at the, the kind of people, the kind of names that are being bandied around for a position in a potential Joe Biden cabinet. Names like Susan Rice, who screwed up so badly during the Benghazi situation, debacle, I should call it, and went around the cable news networks lying through her teeth to the American public. This is the type of person that he wants to put back in his cabinet. They think it's and, time for them to make money now. They think that it's time for them to get back to business. And the business, as usual, is the swamp making more money for themselves the resistance now. And we need to resist the swamp taking over D.C. yet again. Because that is exactly what they want to do in a Joe Biden presidency. And this power that they hope to God that they will have in order to push far-left agendas that are so out of line with what most people and most Americans want from this country. And it's not even about the trans stuff, and it's not even about the China stuff. Look at immigration. Joe Biden has already said that he's going to reverse some of the stuff that President Trump has done to make our border more secure than it's ever been. So we're going to have an outrageous crisis at the border. And don't forget that Joe Biden wants free college for everybody. He wants free health care for everybody. And when all of them were running for president, every single one raised their hands when they said, should that include illegal immigrants? So there's a lot of stuff that is going to be going on during a Joe Biden presidency that is not going to be good for America. So what we do is we stand up and fight. We stand up and fight these culture wars. We stand up and fight for our way of life. Because if we don't stand up right now and make our voices heard against the radical leftist agenda that Pelosi and the squad and all of their puppets are going to put forth now that they have access to this White House, then we're not going to have a country anymore. So you need to get ready to fight. Bring us up to date on the, the legal process. Absolutely. So there's been lawsuits filed all across the country where judges will be able to determine that the evidence that is clearly presented in front of them, whether or not there is widespread fraud. If there is fraud enough such that the results of the election are within dispute, uh, then the Secretary of Commonwealth or the Secretary of the State cannot verify uh, the actual vote in the elections will not be able to come down to Washington and cast that ballot one way or another. The best remedy for that, I do believe, is having a revote uh, before the electoral co before the electoral college. So you're talking about the entire state of Pennsylvania revoting, and it's po and it's possible to do so. Right. Uh, certainly, it's uh, not necessarily the precedent. I think the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania itself has had other lesser positions, justice of the peace, and such that have had recounts in their past or revotes in their past, but certainly something has to be done. The stakes are that important in a presidential election, and I think the other side sort of knew that. The side that stands to benefit from mail-in votes being counted sort of knew that there was going to be a long uphill battle for uh, the Trump campaign to try to make these legal arguments, and so it is in their advantage not to have the process redone. How high of a hurdle is this for you? And, and your team? Well, certainly you have, you have to allege fraud uh, and you have to demonstrate fraud. And the evidence is there and widespread. Uh, what you are dealing with is the ability of the judge, an independent judiciary, not to be swayed by the court of public opinion. And that's one of the more difficult things of living in an area where a media decides that they can call the election, yeah. is that you have folks emotionally tied to the results already. Yes. And a judge that is sitting there watching his countrymen already emotionally vested in the vote, not really wanting to upset the wheel. We're hoping that independent judiciaries can look past the headlines of the day.